The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. And of course, we have Barack Milhouse Hussein Obama, who spent $1.7 million flying off to Las Vegas to give a speech, and he's on his way back home. Notice he never gives these speeches about immigration in border towns. Have you noticed that, Mr. Producer? He didn't go to El Paso. Have you noticed? Yeah. He doesn't go to these border towns to give these speeches. No, he goes to Las Vegas. And I love Las Vegas. It was Obama who was putting down Las Vegas just a few years ago. Now he can't get enough of it. It's odd. Every time he wants to talk to Hispanics, he goes to Las Vegas. I want to give you a little bit of history, uh, some uh, perspective on how we got here on this issue of immigration, illegal immigration. And it's in the chapter in Liberty and Tyranny, but let me discuss it briefly with you, just, just so you understand how often we are lied to as a people. And when I talk about immigration, I'm talking about illegal immigration largely here and legal immigration and not just from one place. In 1965, as part of the Great Society, the status did in fact lay the foundation for radically altering the population of America. When he signed the Hart Seller Act, Senator Hart late Senator Hart of Michigan, Congressman Seller, C-E-L-L-E-R, the Hart Seller Act, President Lyndon Johnson said, quote, This bill that we will sign today is not a revolutionary bill. It does not affect the lives of millions. It will not reshape the structure of our daily lives or really add, importantly, to either our wealth or our power. And during the debate over the bill on the floor of the Senate, Senator Ted Kennedy claimed, quote, First, our cities will not be flooded with a million immigrants annually. Under the proposed bill, the present level of immigration remains substantially the same. Secondly, the ethnic mix of this country will not be upset. This is Ted Kennedy. Contrary to the charges in some quarters, the bill will not inundate America with immigrants from any one country or one area or the most populated and economically deprived nations of Africa uh, and Asia, unquote. Well, Johnson, Kennedy, and the other statists were wrong. And it's hard to believe they weren't intentionally deceiving the public. In 1964, Republican vice presidential candidate, Representative William, William Miller, He well understood the overall increase in immigration that would result from the 1965 Hart Seller Act. He said, quote, We estimate that if the president gets his way and the current immigration laws are repealed, the number of immigrants next year will increase threefold and in subsequent years will increase even more, unquote. Now this Hart Seller Act bill pushed by Johnson and Ted Kennedy abolished the decades-old policy of national quotas, which was said to be uh, discriminatory because it favored immigrants from Europe, especially the United Kingdom, Ireland, and Germany over the Third World. So it increased immigration levels from each hemisphere, setting in motion a substantial increase in immigration from Latin America, Asia, and Africa, reducing the numbers from Europe. The bill also introduced for the first time a system of chain migration, which, as the Center for Immigration Studies notes, gave higher preference to the relatives of American citizens and permanent resident aliens than to applicants with special job skills. So the historical basis for making immigration decisions was radically altered. I'm just giving you the facts. The emphasis would no longer be on preserving the American society and the consent of the governed. Now aliens themselves, through chain migration, would decide who comes to the United States through family reunification. 
And with the elimination of national quotas for different countries and different regions, and the imposition, imposition of chain migration, aliens immigrating to the United States were poorer, less educated, and less skilled than those who had preceded them, a pattern that continues to this day. Don't take offense, I'm just telling you the facts. Even the late author, liberal as he was, Theodore White, no conservative, wrote, quote, The Immigration Act of 1965 changed all previous patterns, and in so doing, probably changed the future of America. It was noble, revolutionary, and probably the most thoughtless of the many acts of the great society, unquote. In the 1960s, Cesar Chavez, one of the founders of the United Farm Workers Union, the UFW, vehemently opposed illegal immigration, arguing it undermined his efforts to unionize farm workers and improve working conditions and wages for American citizen workers. The UFW even reported illegal immigrants to the Immigration and Naturalization Service at the time. And in 1969, Chavez led a march accompanied by Ralph Abernathy, president of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, and Senator Walter Mondale, along the border with Mexico, protesting the farmers' use of illegal immigrants. That is a summary of the history of how we got here today. It didn't start in 1986 with Reagan and amnesty. That contributed to the problem. And in fact, there have been multiple amnesties since the 1965 Act. And under the Hart-Keller Act, upon turning 21 years of age, the child, who's now 21, can sponsor additional family members for citizenship. Now also, this issue of the Constitution itself, this issue of people being born here, babies born here, granted immediate citizenship, because people claim that under the Constitution, if you're born here under American jurisdiction, then you're an American citizen. Actually... That may be the interpretation, but that's not right. As a factual and historical matter, it's not right. People can't confer citizenship on themselves or their children by coming into a country illegally, including this one. Or even coming into a country legally. I'll give you an example. If a visitor comes into this country... Oh, well, let me give you a different example. If a diplomat from another country comes into our country and she's eight and a half months pregnant and a few weeks later gives birth, that child is still a citizen of the nation from where that diplomat came. It's true. And they're not seeking to confer American citizenship on that child. The notion that if somebody comes into this country illegally or flies into this country on a visit for the purpose of having their children here, that they can confer by their own actions citizenship on their own children is absurd. I'm not getting into the immigration reform debates that's going on today yet. We'll get into that soon enough. I'm trying to to explain the circumstances of current events here. And so in 1965, 47 some years ago, 48 some years ago, Lyndon Johnson, Ted Kennedy... Democrats in the Senate and the House lied through their teeth, as they always do, about what they were up to. 
about what they were doing. Lied through their teeth. As they always do. And the more you understand about the history of immigration in this country, particularly illegal immigration, the more skeptical you are of politicians in Washington, particularly the statists, who are constantly selling us a bill of goods. Barack Obama today goes to Las Vegas and he makes perfectly clear that border security is not a priority with him. Just as he claimed credit for more oil and natural gas production in this country, credit that belongs to the private sector, people drilling on private property, fracking technology, all of which he opposes, all of which he seeks to sabotage. The reason why illegal immigration is flat And by the way, that's not a success. The reason why it's flat is in spite of Obama's policy. It's because the economy sucks. Because there aren't jobs. So fewer people are coming in illegally and fewer people are staying. But they're still coming and they're still staying. If we're not going to secure the border, in a way that's measurable, then we cannot agree to anything. More when I return. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.